This week, I was finally able to release my video about the Netflix and Cynthia Cow of uh, Now This Groundhog Day short dispute. Cynthia Cow had written or and produced a very popular, I think it had three and a half million views, short called Groundhog Day for a Black Man. And she had given Now This News permission, you know, the, the company that does like the little white and yellow text overs uh, and makes like short videos about them. She had given them perm permission to use her video as a short and they got like another million and a half views off of that. And then a year later, Netflix releases their Two Distant Strangers short, which is a 30 minute short instead of a four minute short like Cynthia's was. And they had produced their own time loop movie where a black man has a encounter with a, I think, NYPD police officer over and over and over again. And they did their own take on it. It wasn't a copy of her video. It was a copy of the concept of a time loop movie in which a person encounters a police officer over and over again, and it goes wrong every time. In Cynthia's video, they had uh, encounter where the police officer shot the man and in Netflix's production the police officer's interaction was was different different times and there was a different ending to it I believe um, and what I had done was used some footage in my video and immediately received a copyright claim you know when YouTube does the checks part of their upload which is a, again a new thing for YouTube um, this is what I got. I got a content ID claim which made monetization ineligible. So it wasn't that they were claiming my revenue, they were claiming ownership to my video. Video cannot be monetized. The, dis uh, the dispute is that I disputed it. I said it was a fair use and I asked Netflix to release the claim. And they finally did release the claim. But in the process, I was unable to timely publish my video while I was waiting for the fair use defense to be adjudicated privately by Netflix. And I really wanted to say a few words about this because this puts us creators in a really crappy position. I can't produce a video and release it in the same news cycle because you don't take fair use into account. Now, to be clear, I don't know who is responsible for this. Is this content ID on YouTube solely YouTube's doing? Or does the content ID settings that Netflix uses have something to do with it? Why isn't there a manual review before claiming ownership to somebody else's copyrighted work. Why I only used a, a 30 or 45 seconds or something in one clip and, and I think the total I used was a minute or two, sure, but I don't think that should be enough to claim ownership of my entire video. I made a 30 minute video, is it 30 minutes? I think it might even be more than 30 minutes. I made, I made a video about their dispute and they then claimed ownership to my entire video in the sense that they, they, they denied me monetizing the entire video. I don't even think it would change my, my, my belief about it if they claimed ownership to their copyrighted work alone. They, they did, to be clear, claim that their copyrighted work appeared in my copyrighted work and therefore my work was ineligible for monetization, but my work was a fair use and therefore they shouldn't have any ownership claim or any demonetization claim whatsoever. And if I recall correctly, Netflix is in California and I mean, maybe they aren't, maybe I should look up where is Netflix registered? Where is Netflix? Netflix headquarters is Los Gatos, California. So yeah, they're in California. So they're subject to the Lens v. Universal Ninth Circuit precedent, which held that copyright claimants must consider fair use when filing a takedown notice, but noted that to prevail, a plaintiff would have to show bad faith by a rights holder. So in my opinion, Netflix is taking advantage and YouTube is taking advantage. 
they make these claims knowing that creators can't do anything about them and then we have to file appeals and get our rights vindicated even though we were supposed to have the right the entire time. Now, I also think that there is some kind of bad faith going on there because how can you form a subjective good faith belief without actually analyzing it? I don't think that a computer artificial intelligence AI can form a subjective good faith belief. And I would love to be able to test that. I'd love to be able to be a test case for that and, and take that to court and see what a judge has to say. But it would be very expensive, be very distracting. And I think Netflix is counting on copyright owners, subsequent creators, fair users, uh, not to have the wherewithal, whether it be the money or the fortitude or the stamina for a legal dispute like that. I would like to see that adjudicated and once and for all determined that you can't send automated copyright takedowns or make automated monetization claims without considering fair use. Now, the other thing that I haven't even considered farther than this is whether the terms of service of YouTube have me agreeing to all of this. Me, it's very possible. Remember the South Park uh, human sent iPad episode where they sewed, I think it was Kyle into a, a human centipede in order to power an iPad. And Steve Jobs said that everyone had agreed through the terms of service. Well, that's, that's what's going on here. Um, I may have agreed to allow YouTube's content ID system to automatically flag my content and there might be nothing I can do about it because of the terms of service. It's not like I made my video and published it to my own platform and then Netflix made a claim. That would be much easier to adjudicate. So the fact that I'm going through this third party platform, YouTube, and it has its own terms of service probably colors my claim differently and legally it would be adjudicated under a different standard than if I had done it on my own. But the concepts are the same. My release of a video is being delayed because I made a fair use. And so it discourages fair use. Fair use is supposed to encompass the freedom of speech in copyright law. So it's literally a encroachment upon free speech through fair use by denying use for days while you wait for an adjudication. And according to this, the copyright claimant has 30 days to resolve that dispute. So I'm actually lucky in a sense that Netflix was willing to get to my dispute within a few days instead of 30 days, or I wouldn't have been publishing my video. And I don't know what the cause is. Maybe my video just wasn't that great. Maybe the topic just wasn't that interesting, or maybe it was just no longer in the news cycle, but my video didn't perform very well. It's currently my 10th out of 10 most watched or previously watched videos. Uh, so they, YouTube ranks the last 10 videos, one out of one out of 10, and um, it's currently 10th. So it was my least popular video in my last 10 videos. And I don't, I, again, it just, it could be that the content itself was not something people wanted to watch. It could be that I did a bad job with my video or something. Although maybe it's more like I did a bad job with my thumbnail, even though I thought my thumbnail was pretty good. Even, I even paid a license fee to use that groundhog picture. Instead, it'll work out to be a wash since I had to license the picture and thought that I'd be getting a little more traction on that video, but whatever. I, uh, these are the, the ups and downs of being a content creator these days. Uh, let me know what you think of that, whether you like it, that your favorite creators can't make fair uses without being subject to delays and demonetization and further barriers to entry to make basic fair uses of someone's work when instead fair use is supposed to be a right and not a defense to a copyright lawsuit. It is a defense to a copyright lawsuit, but it's also supposed to be a right. And Lens v. Universal set that forth. There should be no question about that. And I guess it will have to be tested again at some point. Someone will be the guinea pig, the, uh, the groundhog. Someone will be the guinea pig to take that to court and adjudicate their rights. Maybe, maybe, maybe someone needs to do that. Maybe that's what's next.
Yes, basically shoot first and ask questions later. And that's our show. Thanks for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education program here on YouTube, also on Floatplane and on twitch.tv slash lawfulmasses, live on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. This is a community-supported channel, which means I need your money. It takes time and effort to make these videos, and in order to make room in my life, I need to also have support so i really appreciate your support on patreon.com slash lj french or sponsors.com slash law you can support the channel through youtube memberships or you can support the channel through float plane subscriptions thank you very much in the month of may to the following 50 dollars plus supporters joe tyson john Steele, gavin barnard ev spirit bear benjamin hytoff ugly grill rudolph Bescherer jr brandon abel torpedon rdh dragon earthbound star and shadow tycho and thank you to the five dollar plus supporters who are scrolling on the screen in front of me you're all on the led tablet behind me i love you all thank you for joining me i'm leonard french i'll see you in the videos that drop and the comments below <laughs>